All right, the most common way you want to create new variables in your data is by computing them. So the mutate function from dplyr is the equivalent of compute variable in SPSS. And we can use it to transform our data or create, um, compute new numeric variables or compute logical variables. So I want to show you how to do each of those things now. So let's use mutate to transform. And then we'll So from memory, if we just look at the summary from um, Clean Beaches again. Oh, yeah. So um, you can see that there are some really extreme values in the beach bugs um, variable. And often when we have extreme values like that, it's useful to log transform the data to see if we can get it back to something that approximates a normal distribution. So we can use mutate to add a column to our data set that um, contains the log transformed beach bugs values. So let's take our clean beaches data and type it into a mutate function. You can see here that mutate is expecting the data and um, then some computation that creates um, a new variable. So we've already told it what our data is because we're piping um, the data into the function, but we can tell it that we want it to create a new column called log beach bugs. And then much like when we were doing summarize before, we can just tell it what to do to get log beach bugs. And as it turns out, there is a function embedded in R to do a log transform. And so we can tell it that we want this new column called log beach bugs and to compute that by taking the log of beach bugs. So if we run that one, you can see here, it is added right next to the beach bugs raw data column, it's added a variable that contains the long transform of the raw column, which is pretty handy. Um, another thing that you might want to do with this type of data is to calculate different scores or change scores. Now, this is a function that I literally learned about on Twitter yesterday, um, and it allows you to create a different score pretty easily without having to worry about loops or other complicated stuff. So the lag function, that's L-A-G, um, will give you essentially the data set one back. So um, what you can use that for is to say, I want a, the difference between each score and one back to get a difference or a change score. So let's add another column to our clean beaches data. This time we want to mutate and we want to create um, a beach bugs, um, let's call it beach bugs difference. And then you tell it how to compute that. So to get beach bugs difference, if you take each beach bugs value, and minus the lag, which is one value back. Um, and if we run that, you can see that it's added another new column. So we have um, our beach bugs and right next to that, we have different scores. So it doesn't give us a difference 
for the first one because what it's doing is taking each score and minusing the previous one to get for this um, value was 16 um, units lower than the previous one. This one was one unit lower. The difference between these two is 11. Okay? So that's pretty handy. And then when you're computing variables using mutate, the output doesn't have to be numeric. Um, you can compute logical variables, so where the outcome, the output into your variable is a true or false. So let's use that to see um, whether each of these, we'll add a new column to see whether each value is higher than the average beach bugs value. Um, so let's do that by taking the clean beaches and we're going to mutate, add a new column called, let's call it buggier. We're creating a true false. Is it buggier than average? Um, equals, and we'll say is each value of beach bugs greater than the mean of right? And so what that's going to give us, oh dear, okay, it doesn't love that, maybe, all oh, right, because when you want to calculate an, a mean, it doesn't know what to do with missing values. So just like when we were doing summarize, we needed to use this NARM equals true. So that means NA, that's missing values, remove them equals true. Let's see if that works better. Yes, all right. So it is true that all of these values are, oh no, that's not, hang on. That has put NARM in a column of its own. No, that's not what I want. I put that in the wrong place. Apologies. That needs to go in here. All right, so when you're calculating the mean, remove the missing values. If I go one open bracket, two open brackets, one closed, two closed. All right, let's try that again. Aha. All right, so um, let's just check that it's doing what we think. So if we say, we just wanna know what the mean bugs equals mean each bugs. Um, I might need to tell it that I want that to come from the clean beaches data. So one way you can refer to a particular column of a particular data frame is to use this um, dollar sign. So if I just want to get a value that lives over in my environment and not just a data frame, um, not a whole data frame, just one value, um, you can refer to a particular column within a particular data frame using this dollar sign. Let's see if that will work. Oops, again, it's warning me that I forgot again to say, remove the NAs is true. Aha, all right. So you can do computations like this and just have a value that lives in your environment. As well. So now we can see that across the whole data set, the mean level of bugs is 33.9. And this buggier column is making a judgment for each of these beach bugs values whether the beach bugs is greater than the mean. And so you can see until we get down to here where we've got 97, it's greater than 33, we've got mostly false for Clovelly. All right, so that's three different kinds of variables that you can use mutate to compute.